No closer to an answer. Now at five, engineers say they still don't know what caused this oceanfront condominium to collapse in the middle of the night last summer. 98 people died when Champlain Tower South collapsed last June. It's a story we've been tracking extensively, and ABC 27's investigative reporter Katie Legrone explains the latest delays in the hunt for answers and where efforts stand right now to make sure it doesn't happen again. <laughs> Miles of rubble on the street. It's been eight months since these images shocked and horrified the country. What's going on? Really tragic scene. But what caused this residential coastal high rise to crumble last summer is now expected to take even longer to answer. At this point, I can't say when we will be done. Alan Kilsheimer, a world-renowned structural engineer, was hired by the town of Surfside to independently investigate why the Champlain Tower South condominium failed in a dramatic overnight collapse. While an ongoing federal investigation is expected to take years, Kilsheimer had anticipated to release his findings by the year anniversary, just four months away. I don't believe it's possible. Kilsheimer points to months of delays in getting access to data and debris, frustrations he wasn't shy about sharing with us in the past. This is the most atypical situation I've been involved in. <laughs> but now, he says, things are moving. In the fall, he was given limited access to the site for testing. This week, his team started taking physical samples, digging holes, opening material up. And within the next week, he'll get his first look inside a warehouse where the feds are keeping some of the largest pieces of the building. Its former site, now a flattened reminder of the unthinkable, where nearly 100 lives were lost. This is such a tragedy and we want to do anything and everything to avoid and prevent any further tragedies. Meanwhile, Representative Jackie Toledo, an engineer by trade herself, is pushing bills that amp up the frequency of inspection and recertification requirements. And despite failed efforts that would have required structural engineers in Florida hold a special license, Toledo's latest effort allows them to obtain a special certification, setting them apart. Right now, any engineer in Florida can sign off on building designs. I'm a civil engineer, I'm a PE, and I can sign and seal um, drawings, but I don't have the expertise or experience to do so. For Kilsheimer, who's based in D.C., adding state laws to beef up inspections and the resumes of those doing them can only do so much. And the key here is to make sure that the people that are doing the recertification are knowledgeable in the types of structure that they're looking at. While those bills make their way to becoming state law, the hunt for answers continues at a much slower pace. An update on the federal investigation is expected in June, but again, no conclusions. Katie Legrone, back to you.